1. The pie chart given below represents the domestic expenditure of a family in percent. The total monthly income of the family is 33,650 pesos. How much money is left after deducting the providential fund and house rent payment? A. 24,435 pesos. B. 23,555 pesos. C. 25,355 pesos. D. 23,545 pesos. To determine the amount of money left after deducting the provident fund and house rent payment from the family's total monthly income of 33,650 Cuban pesos, we first need to calculate the amounts for both expenses. Given that the total monthly income is equal to 33,650 Cuban pesos, the provident fund is equal to 12%, and the house rent is equal to 18%. Let's calculate the amounts for these expenditures. Provident fund is equal to 12 divided by 100 times 33,650 is equal to 4,038. And the house rent is equal to 18 divided by 100 times 33,650 is equal to 6,057. Next, we sum these amounts. Total deductions is equal to 4,038 plus 6,057 is equal to 10,095. Finally, we subtract this total from the monthly income. Amount left is equal to 33,650 minus 10,095 is equal to 23,555. Therefore, the correct answer is, B, 23,555 pesos. 2. The pie chart given below represents the domestic expenditure of a family in percent. The total monthly income of the family is 33,650 pesos. How much is their total savings in the form of provident fund? A. 48,456 pesos. B. 44,856 pesos. C. 45,480 pesos. D. 48,540 pesos. To find the total savings in the form of the provident fund for a family with a monthly income of 33,650 Cuban pesos, we can use the percentage given for the provident fund. Given that total monthly income is equal to 33,650 pesos and provident fund is equal to 12%, let's calculate the annual provident fund savings. Monthly provident fund savings. Monthly provident fund is equal to 12 divided by 100 times 33,650 is equal to 4,038. Annual provident fund savings is equal to 4,038 times 12 is equal to 48,456. Therefore, the correct answer is, A, 48,456 pesos. 3. The bar graph below shows the percentage distribution of total expenditures of a company under various expense heads during 2003. What is the ratio of the total expenditure on infrastructure and transport to the total expenditure on taxes and interest on loans? A. 9, 7. B. 13, 11. C. 5, 4. D. 8, 7. To find the ratio of the total expenditure on infrastructure and transport to the total expenditure on taxes and interest on loans, we can follow these steps. First, determine the percentages of the expenditures for each category from the bar graph. Second, calculate the sum of the percentages for infrastructure and transport. Third, calculate the sum of the percentages for taxes and interest on loans. Fourth, compute the ratio of these two sums.
From the bar graph. Infrastructure is 20%. Transport is 12.5%. Taxes is 10%. Interest on loans is 17.5%. The sum of expenditures on infrastructure and transport is 20 plus 12.5 which is equal to 32.5. The sum of expenditures on taxes and interest on loans is 10 plus 17.5 which is equal to 27.5. Now, the ratio of the total expenditure on infrastructure and transport to the total expenditure on taxes and interest on loans is 32.5 over 27.5. Let's simplify this ratio by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 10. Now it is equal to 325 over 275. Both are divisible by 25. Therefore it is now equal to 13 over 11. The correct answer is, B, 1311. 4. The city government of Minas Tirith has approved its budget of 250 million pesos for the fiscal year 2019. The pie chart below summarizes the allocation for eight major areas of concern in the city. Based on the chart, how much is allocated for the area with the greatest percentage? A. 50,250,000 pesos. B. 63,750,000 pesos. C. 72,500,000 pesos. D. 24,900,000 pesos. To find the amount allocated for the area with the greatest percentage in the budget, follow these steps. First, identify the percentage for the area with the greatest allocation from the pie chart. Second, calculate the amount by applying this percentage to the total budget. From the pie chart. The greatest percentage allocation is for infrastructure at 29%. Amount allocated is equal to 0.29 times 250 million is equal to 72,500,000. Therefore, the amount allocated for the area with the greatest percentage is 72,500,000 pesos. 5. The following line graph gives the percentage of the number of candidates who qualified an examination out of the total number of candidates who appeared for the examination over a period of 7 years from 1994 to 2000. If the total number of candidates appeared in 1996 and 1997 together was 47,400, then the total number of candidates qualified in these two years together was? To find the total number of candidates who qualified in the years 1996 and 1997 together, follow these steps. Determine the percentage of candidates who qualified in each of these years from the line graph. Calculate the number of candidates who appeared in each year. Use the percentages to find the number of candidates who qualified in each year. Sum the number of candidates who qualified in both years. From the line graph. The percentage of candidates who qualified in 1996 is 60%, while the percentage of candidates who qualified in 1997 is 50%. Given that the total number of candidates who appeared in 1996 and 1997 together is 47,400. Now, let's denote, number of candidates who appeared in 1996 as X. And number of candidates who appeared in 1997 as Y. Then, X plus Y is 47,400. The number of candidates who qualified in 1996 is 0.6x, and the, the number of candidates who qualified in 1997 is 0.5y. Therefore, the total number of candidates who qualified in 1996 and 1997 together is 0.6x plus 0.5y. Since we don't have the individual values of x and y, we can assume equal distribution of candidates across both years, a common approach in the absence of additional data, but for a precise answer, the problem lacks sufficient data. So, the answer should be, a, data inadequate. 6. The bar graph below shows the percentage distribution of total expenditures of a company under various expense heads during 2003. 
The expenditures on the interest on loans are by what percent more than the expenditures on transport? A. 10%. B. 40%. C. 30%. D. 20%. To determine by what percent the expenditures on interest on loans are more than the expenditures on transport, we can use the following formula. Percentage increase is equal to expenditure on interest on loans minus expenditure on transport all over expenditure on transport times 100. From the bar graph, the expenditure on interest on loans is 17.5%. While the expenditure on transport is 12.5%. Now, substituting the values. Percentage increase is equal to 17.5 minus 12.5 all over 12.5 times 100 is equal to 40%. Therefore, the expenditures on interest on loans are 40% more than the expenditures on transport. The correct answer is B, 40%. 7. Below are the expenditures of a company, in million US dollars, per annum over the given years. The total expenditure on all these items in 1998 was approximately what percent of the total expenditure in 2002? A. 62% B. 71% C. 69% D. 66% To determine the total expenditures for the years 1998 and 2002 and find the percentage of the 1998 total expenditure relative to the 2002 total expenditure, we need to sum the expenditures for each item in both years and then perform the percentage calculation. The total expenditures in 1998 are salary, 288, fuel and transport, 98, bonus, 3.00, interest on loans, 23.4, and taxes, 83 which is equal to 495.4. The total expenditures in 2002, salary, 420, fuel and transport, 142, bonus, 3.96, interest on loans, 49.4, and taxes, 98, which is equal to 713.36. The percentage calculation is equal to the total expenditure in 1998 divided by the total expenditures in 2002 times 100 is 495.4 divided by 713.36 times 100 is equal to 69.46%. The total expenditure in 1998 is approximately 69% of the total expenditure in 2002. Thus, the correct answer is C. 69%. 8. Below are the expenditures of a company in million US dollars, per annum over the given years. The total amount of bonus paid by the company during the given period is approximately what percent of the total amount of salary paid during this period? A. 0.5% B. 1% C. 1.25% D. 0.1% To find the percentage of the total bonus paid by the company compared to the total salary paid during the given period, we need to sum up the bonus and salary amounts for each year from 1998 to 2002. The total bonus paid, 1998 to 2002 1998, 3.00, 1999, 2.52, 2000, 3.84, 2001, 3.68, and 2002, 3.96, a total of 16.00. The total salary paid, 1998 to 2002 1998, 288, 1999, 342, 2000, 324, 2001, 336, 2002, 420, a total of 1710. 
The percentage calculation is equal to total bonus divided by total salary times 100. Percentage is equal to 16 divided by 1710. This is equal to 0.935% and is approximately equal to 1%. Thus, the closest answer is B, 1%. 9. The production head of the Genie Ice Cream Company was asked to prepare his 2019 budget. His total budgeted expense is 35 million pesos. He prepared the pie graph of his production expenses which is shown below. Based on the chart, the combined expenses for materials and utilities would amount to a. 1,400,000 pesos b. 144,000 pesos c. 14 million pesos d. 140,000 pesos To find the combined expenses for materials and utilities, we need to determine the percentage of the budget allocated to each and then sum these amounts. The percentages from the pie chart, materials, 15% and utilities, 25%. Combining percentage for materials and utilities, 15% plus 25% is equal to 40%. The total budgeted expense is equal to 35 million pesos. Combining the expenses for materials and utilities, 0, 0.40 times 35 million pesos is equal to 14 million pesos. Thus, the correct answer is C. 14 million pesos. 10. Below are the number of candidates appeared and qualified in a competitive examination from different states over the years. The total number of candidates qualified from all the states together in 1997 is approximately what percentage of the total number of candidates qualified from all the states together in 1998. A. 77%. B. 72%. C. 80%. D. 83%. To find the percentage of the total number of candidates who qualified from all the states together in 1997 relative to the total number of candidates who qualified in 1998, we use the following formula. Percentage is equal to total qualified in 1997 divided by total qualified in 1998 times 100. The total number of candidates qualified in 1997 is 4160. And the total number of candidates qualified in 1998 is 5230. Percentage is equal to 4160 divided by 5230 times 100 is equal to 79.54%. Thus, the total number of candidates qualified in 1997 is approximately 80% of the total number of candidates qualified in 1998. Therefore, the correct answer is C, 80%.